You know the character Salacious Crumb? Yeah. Do you know where the name comes from? They're making Jedi. And one night they all go out. They all go to a bar. Uh, they get pretty drunk. And um, they're walking back. And Phil Tippett is really drunk. And he stops. And everyone turns around. And they're like, Phil, what are you doing? And he's so drunk. He goes... <laughs> We're here with Brian Volkweiss from Icons on Earth Star Wars. Brian, welcome to the Den of Geek Suite. Thank you for having me. Always an honor. So tell me a little bit about Icons on Earth Star Wars. Almost got it there. And how yeah. that came into being. Yeah. So we about six years, well, technically five years ago, but we started working on it six years ago. We do the show called The Toys That Made Us. That led to movies that made us. That led to a couple other shows. This thing we did last year called The Center Seat, 55 Years of Star Trek. You know, again, I hate saying stuff like this. But it seems pe people liked it because the ratings were good, comments, everything was good. So we basically were like, I think we're ready to do Star Wars. Like we saved, like I'm in show business because of Star Wars. Like I would be like a dentist or something, whatever, in Queens if it wasn't for Star Wars. So I didn't want to start with Star Wars, even though I kind of did because the first toys that made us was Star Wars. And, and it was kind of cheating. That was it. It was like, we're ready to do it. We are now self-financing our own shows for the most part. So once I felt like, okay, we're ready, we just started the research and Vice stepped up and they wanted to do it with us and we're doing it. So you're known as being like you were just saying you you're the first the the toys that made us of star wars and you're just known from the uh from just being almost an encyclopedia of star wars knowledge so i have to ask while you were researching icons on earth did you learn anything that you didn't know about the the first six movies the meaningful stuff i mean you know, we got Marsha Lucas's first on-camera interview ever. And it's like, of all the interviews she's ever done, it's her second. Her first was 48 years ago. And it was like some newspaper that's out of business in Northern California. So we had a six hour interview with her. And like, I would, so like I've been, for lack of a better word, studying Star Wars since I was like five. So I would say over the last 10 years, I probably learned maybe one in a good year, two new things about Star Wars in an, any given year. Uh, six hour interview with Marsha, I probably learned 50 to 60 new things. And I would say almost every five or six minutes, she said something where like, I couldn't really pay attention to what else she was saying because I was like still trying to recover from what she had just dropped. And I'm like, Mar Marsha, Marsha, um, stop. I'm like, <laughs> go back a minute. Did you just say, and she's like, yeah, what's the big deal? I'm like, nobody knows that. Nobody. You know that because you were there in the room. And that happened, like I said, I was there about six hours. I mean, that happened probably 20 times. Obviously, we want people to watch the show, but can you give us a taste of some of these new nuggets of information? Yeah, I'll, tell, I'll tell you my favorite. I'll tell you my favorite from Marsha. Just offhandedly, she's like, da 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 da. And then, you know, George had to fight for the final battle, and then da 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 da. I go, whoa, 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 Marsha, Marsha, come back. What? What do you mean he had to fight for the final battle? And she's like, what? Uh, yeah, the uh, Fox was upset. We were over budget and behind schedule, and yeah, they wanted it to. They wanted to cut the whole ending. I go, well, how would the movie have ended? And she literally goes, well, Have you seen Star Wars? Well, you know when they leave, they're like in the Millennium Falcon and they fight off four Tie Fighters. I'm like, Yeah. She's like, That that's how it would have ended. Oh my God. So I go. You're telling me Fox was putting pressure? And she was like, yeah, they, we were like really over budget and really behind schedule. It kind of made sense they were doing that. And she was like, George fought like crazy. Everybody fought. And they were like, all right, all right, finish the movie. So we almost had a Star Wars that ended with like a, you know, a four, four TIE fighter battle. That's, that's unimaginable to me, especially since like Star Wars is arguably the most overanalyzed film of our time just because it's so amazing and everyone loves it and just its cultural impact 
and to learn like little little bits of information like that. I can imagine you you like yeah, I can imagine you sitting there and just needing like a minute to process it was, this information. And that was like every five or six yeah. minutes she would drop something like that. Can I tell you a small stupid one? This was from Please. Phil Tippett. Yeah. But this was like and again it's not as mind blowing as yeah. that. We've interviewed Phil before three or four times. Yeah. So like you never know what you're gonna get with him. You know the character Salacious Crumb? Yeah. Do you know where the name comes from? They're making Jedi, and one night they all go out, they all go to a bar, and uh, they get pretty drunk. They get pretty... This is TV, so I can't use the word I want to use. It's actually two words. There's a there's a hint. Uh, they get pretty drunk. And um, they're walking back, and Phil Tippett is really drunk, and he stops, and everyone turns around, and they're like, Phil, what are you doing? And he's so drunk, he goes, Hey, I'm just tying my Salacious. They remembered it the next morning, and it was when George was coming by to approve aliens and stuff. And just to mess with Phil Tippett, they wrote Salacious Crumb on the thing. And George comes in, he's like, I love it, great, and just kept going. And that's literally him drunk saying shoelaces is how we got salacious crumb that's that's amazing <laughs> i was just watching the documentary in search of tomorrow that has some great phil tippett content in there uh for for those in in the viewing audience who haven't seen it it's a five and a half hour documentary about the history Dying of science fiction it. it's, it's incredible but he just casually mentions how george lucas directed like a chunk of howard the duck in it which is something Ooh. that i had known because i met an extra who had been to the the uh the concert scene at the end of the film and Lucas was there directing it. So Tippett's this really interesting character and I can't wait to see him interviewed in that in, he, in your show. It's our fourth time interviewing yeah. him and he was in like scoop mode. I mean, He's always he, in rare form too. I mean he normally I find uh, holds his cards pretty close to his vest and you gotta kind of keep poking him to get the, yeah. the, the good stuff. Not this time. This time he was like, what do you want to know? And he, I mean, he answered everything and and he went there. You did the uh, the original trilogy, trilogy and the prequels. Correct. Uh, do you, are there plans in the work to do the sequel trilogy? Or is it just too new? <sighs> Here, I'm probably going to be more on it. I could dodge this and I probably should. Yeah. But I, uh, I, for whatever reason, I always put my head in the, uh, in the, in the shark's mouth. I don't like to make things where I'm punching down. I'd love to talk about Force Awakens. I'd love to talk about Rogue One. And I know this is a little controversial. I'd love to talk about Solo. Not much else. Not a Last Jedi guy, uh, to put it mildly. So I, if I could do a season where it's like random Star Wars I like, right, right. Um, which would be like Clone War, then I would do that. Yeah. But I don't. I don't want to do the you know seven, eight, nine. Sure. Because I only like one of them. I completely appreciate your frankness with, with yeah, that I answer. Let someone else uh, do that. Yeah. By the way, it was tough enough with the prequels because I'm one of the. I'm 46, and I feel like I'm one of the few people my age that likes the originals and the prequels. And, you know, I would get these cuts. I get like a first cut when they're just slamming the prequels. And I'm like, you got to understand anyone under 32 or 33 loves these movies and hates our movies. So we got to be cool. Oh, and by the way, I like these movies. Now, listen, Phantom Menace, you know, some issues. Like, we can't be disrespectful to these films. Otherwise, we shouldn't be doing the show. So... And that was with movies I like. So imagine if we could do in Last Jedi. Like uh, I'd be like, great, make it worse, make it meaner. And like I don't want to do that. Be like Vice, real after dark. Yes, where it would have exactly. That. So uh, I, I think I can pretty much guess the answer to this question, but I want to ask anyway, just to have it on the record. Uh, your favorite of the original Star Wars trilogy? I I'm curious to see if you've ever heard this before. I respect A New Hope because there's no Star Wars without it. Right. I love Return of the Jedi. And I, I have no memory of seeing Star Wars or Empire in the theater. Yeah. And I recognize that Empire is, within reason, the best Star Wars ever made. Though I would argue the last four episodes of Clone Wars Season 7 are as good as Empire Strikes Back. Just in case you didn't think I really was a Star Wars fan, I want to throw that out there. Yeah. But anyway, that all being said, I, ju I just love Return of the Jedi, man. And I know it's got problems. Right. It has the worst special effect moment in any Star Wars. Like, it has problems. 
I just love it. I just think it's so much fun. Well, we just became official best friends ha! because uh, I would I, I I don't think it's the best, but for a long time I kind of overlooked my true feelings for it, and uh, it, it's definitely the most fun experience I remember as yeah. a childhood in movie theater. I remember I went with uh, my brother and my late father, and we waited in line all day long at the local movie theater in Philly where I grew up, and uh, it's still every second of that movie is burned into my memory and the theatrical experience and the cheers and the the absolute everything and the way it made me feel so emotionally i'm hard to i, I have a real hard time detaching myself from that experience and i can't think of another movie uh from my childhood except maybe howard the duck with that uh that i had that experience as you can tell i'm a bit of a howard the duck fan uh, apparently as, as i've written about on Denna geek plenty of times so uh after after this this season comes what uh what are some other properties you'd like to tackle in icons on earth so we are actually announcing at our panel uh we've been picked up for season two okay. um and season two is going to be the simpsons nice and unlike star wars uh where i think we've made the 301st documentary yeah. uh, i am not aware of any deep dive it's going to be six episodes on the simpsons i'm not aware of uh, of a deeper dive and so, are you, with with it going from movies to TV, will you also like tackle like books, uh, book series, like Icons on Earth, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, things like that? Will it's so funny. The example I'm going to give you, I mean, I cannot even believe I'm saying this, but I am obsessed with Top Gun Maverick. So I literally went from being like a not like I never hated Tom Cruise, but like I kind of never got it. Like he's not kind of my guy. I am now obsessed with him. Like that, I, I have seen it twice in the theaters. I do not have time to see the same movie twice in theaters. I could go see it a third time. I don't know what it is with that film. I am obsessed with Top Gun Maverick. So to that point, to your answer your question, because you're like, why are you talking about that? Um, maybe we one day we do the the, the 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 films of Tom Cruise. Like that's why I picked that title. You love saying Icons on Earth because I wanted something that could cover anything. The way Toys That Made Us could become the movies that made us, uh, that was a very kind of lucky thing. Like I didn't do that on purpose. So this was done on purpose. Uh, do you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to say about Icons on Earth? Sam, getting better at it. You are. Much better at it. I do. Yes. And I need to say this because I did a whole ton of press before the premiere and I didn't say it once. And okay. I got in a lot of trouble. Vice. Tuesdays, 10 p.m. Vice, <laughs> Tuesdays, 10 p.m. I literally did about 80 interviews and didn't say that once. So, so I just I just want to ask you then, so yes. when is it on and what's it on? Thank you for asking. This time I'll look at you. Yes. Um, Vice, 10 o'clock, Tuesdays. First two episodes have aired. We got four more to go. Yeah. All right. I'm really looking forward to checking this out. Thank you, man. Brian, thank you so much for your time as always. Fun, as we love always. you here at Denny Geek. Yeah. So thanks. Thank you. Mm -hmm.